Have you ever considered how advanced laser techniques can significantly impact the way we manage glaucoma while preserving patient comfort? Watch this video and find out. Welcome to MIGS Made Clear, where we break down microinvasive glaucoma surgery into bite-sized chunks so you can walk away with a much greater understanding and feel more MIGS confident. Today, we dive into endocyclophotocoagulation, or ECP, and micropulse laser therapy, two cutting-edge approaches that are expanding our options in glaucoma care. By the way, my name is Dr. Constance Okeke, and I'm an Ivy League, Wilmer Eye, and Baskin Palmer trained glaucoma specialist and cataract surgeon. Here here to guide you through another exciting part of MIGS Made Clear. This six-part educational series is supported by an unrestricted educational grant from New World Medical, Nova Eye Medical, and Sight Sciences. In this video, we'll cover the fundamentals of ECP and micropulse laser techniques, explaining how they work, their clinical applications, and key considerations for patient selection. Make sure to watch to the end to find out what we'll be discussing in the next video. Let's make MIGS Clear one innovative technique at a time. Now, in Integrating new technologies into glaucoma management can be daunting, but it's also where innovation thrives. Early in my practice, I was using traditional transcleral diode cyclophotocoagulation, or CPC, for my advanced glaucoma cases with poor vision, with the understanding that there was a potential risk for prolonged inflammation. Now, with laser advancements, I became intrigued by the potential of ECP and micropulse lasers to provide effective IOP control with minimal collateral damage. I remember the first time I did a micropulse laser. I was amazed at the simplicity of the technique and then the power of the IOP reduction. I was so intrigued, I entered into clinical research studies with Eastern Virginia medical students, and those studies showed significant efficacy in my glaucoma patient population. I have seen firsthand how these techniques can benefit glaucoma patients struggling with medication intolerance or refractory glaucoma. So I'm so excited to help you better understand these laser techniques and how to incorporate them into your practice. Lesson 1 background and targeted anatomy. Let's start with some background on cyclodestruction. Traditional CPC has been used widely since its development in the 1990s. In these procedures, a diode laser targets and destroys the pigmented ciliary body epithelium, which is a key anatomical structure that is within the ciliary body, thereby decreasing production of aqueous humor. However, laser delivered at a continuous dose, which is the case with CPC, frequently results in significant significant collateral tissue damage, contributing to serious complications such as uveitis, vision loss, chronic hypotony, choroidal attachment, and more rarely, tysis bulbi and sympathetic ophthalmia. Traditionally, these procedures have been limited to patients with refractory glaucoma, usually as a last resort after failure of other surgical procedures. Lesson 2, Mechanism of Action The micropulse transcleral diode cyclophotocoagulation, or micropulse, has therefore been been developed over recent years as an alternative, potentially safer approach than transcleral cyclodestruction, or CPC. The micropulse laser's mechanism of action is to deliver through the sclera repetitive microsecond bursts of energy to the pigmented ciliary body epithelium interspersed with rest or cooling intervals to minimize collateral tissue damage while then reducing IOP. Now, IOP is thought to reduce by the the heated induced changes in the ciliary body morphology, whereby the tissue actually shrinks, opening up supraciliary space, resulting in increased uveoscleral outflow of aqueous humor. The ECP mechanism also targets the ciliary epithelium to reduce aqueous production, but here the laser energy is delivered precisely, causing visual whitening and shrinkage of the ciliary processes without damaging surroundings surrounding tissues. Histological studies confirm that there is less tissue disruption with ECP than with traditional CPC. These mechanisms ensure safety and efficacy even in challenging cases. Lesson 3. Mixed devices in this class and how they work. Now let's go over the micropulse laser. The most commonly used device is the Cyclo-G6 glaucoma laser system with a micropulse P3 probe. It uses a diode laser in the micropulse mode. The handpiece has bunny ears that are directed at the limbus. Let's go over the micropulse laser therapy steps. First, one will administer monitored anesthesia care with a retrobulbar or peribulbar block. 
The Micropulse P3 probe is then placed perpendicularly to the limbus and moved in sweeping motions over 180 or 360 degrees of the limbus. Now I typically perform 360 degrees separated in four quadrants. My treatment times range from 30 to 90 seconds per quadrant and I adjust the power between 2000 to 2500 milliwatts based on the IOP severity and stage of the patient. Glaucoma. After treatment, the eye is patched for at least six hours since a retrobulbar block was used. Now, let's move on to the ECP, which utilizes a microendoscopic laser probe combining three fiber optics an image guide, a light guide, and a diode laser guide. The endoscope's probe, which is available in 18 to 23 gauge sizes, provides about a 110 degree field of view. The surgeon is then able to simultaneously view the processes on a video monitor and titrate the treatment. There are various ways to approach the ciliary processes and many techniques that can be employed uh, are depending on the lens status, phacic or pseudophagic, as well as the type and severity of disease being treated. ECP can be utilized with a pars plana incision or limbal approach, which is often done in concurrent cataract surgery. Let's go over the ECP surgical steps. After making a limbal or pars plana incision, the anterior chamber is stabilized and the ciliary sulcus is deepened using a cohesive ophthalmic viscoelastic. The endoscope is then positioned about one to three millimeters from the ciliary processes. The laser power is titrated between 100 to 300 milliwatts to achieve whitening and shrinkage of the ciliary processes. At least 270 degrees or more of treatment is considered an optimal result. Lesson four, indications and contraindications. ECP is a very versatile glaucoma treatment and can be performed on most patients with glaucoma, open angle glaucoma, angle closure with prior angle opening surgery, traumatic glaucoma, or pediatric glaucoma. It is most commonly performed at the time of cataract surgery for mild to moderate glaucoma, but it can be performed as a standalone procedure to treat more severe disease. Caution should be taken in patients with neovascularization or uveitic glaucoma due to the possibility of severe inflammation or hypotony. Take caution in phacic patients as there is an increased risk of cataract progression. Also in patients with severe pseudoxfoliation. White debris is often scattered over the surface of the ciliary processes, so visible whitening and shrinkage may not be apparent, so caution should be taken to avoid overtreatment. Micropulse lasers, on the other hand, are ideal for patients requiring a gentle approach to IOP reduction, especially at those at risk of thermal damage from traditional lasers. Micropulse is also very versatile in that it can be performed on refractory glaucoma, where eyes have received prior and incisional glaucoma surgery, such as trabecolectomy or tube shunt surgery. This can be done in seeing eyes with good visual potential, as well as a variety of glaucoma subtypes, including primary open angle, pseudoxfoliation, neovascularization, chronic angle closure, uveitic patients, and normal tension glaucoma. Caution should be taken where there is thin conjunctiva or cystic blebs, as well as when there is severe conjunctival scarring. So in summary, today we explore the innovative applications of ECP and micropulse laser therapy. From their unique mechanisms to their clinical applications, these techniques are transforming how we approach glaucoma care. These techniques offer effective, minimally invasive solutions to managing glaucoma, whether it's refractory cases or patients with good visual potential. As always, patient selection and tailored execution are the key to success. Before we close up, here's what I'd like you to do. Subscribe to the iGlaucoma YouTube channel for more videos in the series. Share this video with colleagues who are passionate about glaucoma care. Check out the resources below for a deep dive into these technologies and a sneak peek on what's to come next in the series. And don't forget to grab a copy of the Glaucoma Guidebook for practical tips on managing glaucoma, which is great for glaucoma patients. Thank you for joining me today. I hope this breakdown clarified the advantages and applications of ECP and micropulse techniques, as well as boosted your confidence in selecting the right tools for your patients. And if you want to further enhance your MIG 
Briggs Learning, watch the next episode where we will be discussing superciliary shunts. Let's continue making MIGS clear one innovation at a time. This video was brought to you through the AGE Initiative and iGlaucoma.